Welcome. Today we're going to talk about the December real estate numbers just released by Treb. And I'm joined by one of my great friends and colleagues, Lawrence Mack, Mississauga real estate agent. Lawrence, are you there? I'm here. How are you doing, Chris? Good. Good to see you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Excellent. So, Lawrence, um, lots of buzz about the December numbers. I think we've broken some records. Uh, I'm curious to see what you are seeing and, and how those numbers are breaking down for you as a realtor. Why don't you go ahead? Awesome. Well, let me share my screen. Give me a second. There we go. So December, this is based on just the December numbers and not uh, 2020 as a whole. But specifically okay. in December, we're talking uh, 7,180 sales. This is across all the different types of houses and across all the GTA, which is up 65% since last year. And the average selling price is about 932,000, which is up 11% from last year. Um, so that's with all the different types of houses and, uh, but condo apartments specifically have been going down. Uh, overall mm -hmm. in the GTA, about 2%. Overall the GTA and specifically downtown Toronto, it's about 4.6%. Hmm. Are, are you shocked to see those numbers? Uh, not quite. Um, I, you can see the going trend because of COVID. Again, everybody mm -hmm. is trying to get out of the downtown core. So right. you have problems such as no more Airbnb. You have problems such as the student housing. The rental market there isn't quite there because right. you can do virtual learning and international students are no longer living here. So there's a lot of reasons why that's happening. And plus, people right. want more space. Yeah. Okay. Overall, uh, in Toronto, as you can see, typically you have a spring market, it goes down to the summer market, and you have the fall market. Uh, this fall market was quite extended, probably pent up demand from the previous spring. And you can see it peaked around October, and now we're down a little bit. Although we are down a little bit in December compared with November, it is quite significantly up since the previous year, up right. about 11%. And this is what we're looking at here, prices on this graph. Yeah, this would be the Not average selling price. Market. So on average, the price sold for 932,000, which is up 11% from 2019. Got it. Wow. That's incredible. That is quite a bit. Uh, so this is the snapshot of the different types of houses. Just to give you a, a quick idea, the mm -hmm. detached home market is going crazy. Amounts of inventory usually around one month or less. And sales to list price is pretty good, close to 100%. A few weeks, uh, days on market kind of thing. But the main right. thing you need to look at here is the Toronto condos which right. has been a lot of sales. Months of inventory is about two months of inventory. What that mm -hmm. means is that there's about two months, if everybody, if no additional condos came out on the market, it'll take about two months to sell all of them. Right. And that's uh, significant since previously it was measured in weeks and now it's measured in months. So right. And, and, and the average day of sales. So if somebody is trying to sell a condo right now, um, reasonably they should expect between 30 and 60 days to sell. Yeah. Pretty much. And plus, this is the number based on um, whenever a property is listed and then tried to sell. It does not mm. really include when a property is listed, delisted and relisted, and then delisted and relisted <laughs> again. So the number is probably a higher by a little bit. Right. But we don't know what the actual number is unless you do complex calculations. Right. Now, now, I'm looking at the, uh, sorry, at the bottom, if you can go back to that slide. Yep. It, it indicates between zero and three months of inventory is still considered to be a seller's market. So it's not as if the sky is falling. Correct. It's been pretty much a seller's market in the GTA for many, many, many years. Uh, hasn't <laughs> really been a balanced market. counting in decades now. <laughs> yeah, possibly decades. I mean, it hasn't really been, I, it's a balance in the buyer's market in certain pockets, but in general, mm -hmm. the real estate market is very robust in that the right. values hold and they start going up. Right. Uh, so this is the condo Toronto, the Toronto condo apartments. And they did some weird thing where it goes up and down, up and down. We're roughly here. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's gone down since October. But the second thing is, as you notice, this is the previous line from 2019. We're actually yeah. down about 5% from the previous year. Right. And this right. is in terms of sale price. This is in terms of sales price. So previously when condos were appreciating $50,000 per year or 15 to 20% appreciation yeah. year over year, now we're talking a depreciation of about 5%. So Right, right. Not, well, we can, it, it, you know, that trend, that downward trend seems to be pretty, cons well, it, we've seen it before. I'm looking at what year is that, the Burgundy 2017, there was a, a similar yeah. dip at the end of the year as well. That was when the B20 rules came into play. 
Yeah, and here's where the yeah, foreign buyers tax haven. So yeah, right. there's always a lot of things that affect the market, but the, right. the going trend right now, as you can see, it is going down. I mean, mm -hmm. anecdotally, we are seeing that the inventory is starting to uh, tighten a little bit, but it's still, in my opinion, a little bit more of a buyer's market than it was previously. Sure. So these are the ideas of the Toronto condo rental market. Uh, this is only based on Q3 of 2020. We don't have the Q4 results yet. The mm -hmm. Q3, which would be the third quarter of last year. If you're talking the number that are just for lease, we're talking about 35,000 for lease. And this is an increase of 114% from the previous year. So the previous year had maybe 16,000 uh, yeah. units that were for lease, and now we have 35,000. So oh my gosh. there's a significant number of people trying to rent out uh, the number of people who actually rented it was about 14,000. As you can see, these are the average prices of rental per mm -hmm. month. And it's gone down since the previous year, 2019. So maybe right. a single bachelor would have been like 1,800, 1,850, something like that. Now it's only mm -hmm. 1,600 per month as of Q3 of 2020. So as you can wow. see, as, as a landlord, owning right now isn't the best time. The general right. recommendation is if you could hold it, try to hold it because a lot of people are trying to sell or rent it. Right, 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 right. Okay, I, I see that that trend downwards. So what are we looking at here? We are looking evictions, at a map of evictions in a, I believe it was a two week period. This is from the LTB, uh, the Landlord Tenant Board. Uh, and there are quite a lot of eviction notices and hearings. Uh, that just gives you a snapshot of the GTA of what's happening now. <laughs> so it's not, right. it's not that easy to be a landlord just to own a place and rent it out and make a whole bunch of money. I mean, that's the, you know, that's a myth. Um, right. It takes effort. Well, let, let me ask you, Lawrence. I mean, if, if you're a landlord who owns property, condo or, or detached or um, a townhouse, um, when you see something like this, should, should there be concern? I mean, what, what kind of guidance do you have? Do you wait it out or do you try and, and dump the property now? What, what's your guidance as a realtor on this? So typically, How do you see it unfolding? Typically, my guidance doesn't have to do with the specific property. It has to do with the situation of the person who's holding the property. So some mm -hmm. people were speculating, maybe with Airbnb, had a few properties, and now they're not making any money. You should pretty much dump them all now because it's very difficult for you to hold them from a financial right. point of view. But if your long-term right. goal is, you know, we want to have three, four, five uh, income-producing properties over the long term, then this is really just a little bit of a blip in the whole situation over the decade horizon. Yeah. And I think it's okay. And I, I would probably recommend to try to wait it out or maybe rent out for a slightly lower just to get the cash flow. And then when everything gets better, then it's okay. But if you sell it right. now, you'll probably be selling it at a little bit of a discount. Right, right, right. Depending on when you bought it, of course. But yeah, I think it's important for, for cash flow. And you know, one of the amazing things that I think as a, as a broker and dealing on the financing side is um, we of course have very strict stress tests uh, in order to qualify for a mortgage. And all right. those stress tests, there was a lot of criticism over the years about uh, how the government was uh, manipulating and changing things and making it difficult for borrowers. But in hindsight, uh, <laughs> hindsight 2020, um, that may have saved the, the GTA market from collapse and uh, we're showing a lot of resilience, aren't we? Yeah, we are. I mean, it, in general, I always feel that the Toronto real estate market is very robust. I mean, where else would you want to live, really? <laughs> <laughs> we are, uh, such a Toronto thing to say. We are the center of the universe. We are, we the, are the center of the universe. But, <laughs> but like I tell people, you know, if you're going to pick a country to live, I mean, my top picks would be Canada, U.S. and Australia and maybe not the U.S. anymore. And if you're going <laughs> to live in Canada, right, Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal. Yeah. So if you're anywhere in the world and you had money and you're leaving, like where, where do you want to immigrate to? And yeah. my feeling is Toronto is always going to be the place to be. So we're so, we're from a macro so point of view, I think it's very robust. Yeah, we're so fortunate. And I think you hit the nail on the, on the head. Um, Lawrence, we're going to leave it there. I really appreciate your time. If somebody wants to get in touch with you to talk further about real estate and what their needs are and what guidance you can offer, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Best way, either give me a call myself, 416-276-4895. Find me on social media or just go to my website at lawrencemack.com. Awesome. Thanks again, Lawrence. We'll see you in a couple of months. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Chris.